A very happy Independence Day to all our viewers. As India celebrates its 70th year of independence, what are the next steps in the country's journey to realizing its full potential? What indications does Prime Minister Narendra Modi's speech from the ramparts of the Red Fort today give us about the governance agenda for the next one year? Well, let me introduce our panel on the show this morning. Joining in, Mohandas Pai of Manipal Global Education Services, R. Jagannathan, Editorial Director, Swaraj Magazine, Naushad Forbes of Forbes Marshall and, of course, President CII, Ms. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, CMD of Biocon, and A.K. Bhattacharya, Editorial Director of the Business Standard. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Shaw and gentlemen, for joining in. In fact, Ms. Shaw, if I could come to you first. Uh, from whatever I heard, there weren't any great flagship program announcements. This was not a speech about launching a new agenda. A lot of uh, re re-encapsulation of what the government has been doing, certain claims being made, for instance, bringing, out, bringing down inflation, and some strong social messages going out. What did you think? Well, you know, an Independence Day speech is supposed to be about rhetoric that unifies the nation, that, you know, brings pride in the nation. So it is going to be very, very long on rhetoric, but short on specifics, you know, which is what is expected. I think a few takeaways were that uh, the Prime Minister did at least uh, talk about the one lakh reimbursement on, on health care for poor people and, and I thought that was a big takeaway for me. Let me bring in the editors yeah. as well, um, uh, A.K. Bhattacharya and R. Jagannathan. Uh, uh, Mr. Bhattacharya, if I could come to you, sir, what do you make of the fact that there were several instances, several remarks uh, on the importance of coming together, rising above our differences, unity in diversity and these remarks come in just after the comments that we've heard on Gaurakshaks and the kind of controversy that the Prime Minister seems to be trying to put to rest. Uh, what did you think and do you think this message is really going to go through? Well, I think uh, you are right. Uh, I think his message on social justice, social harmony uh, and, uh, you know, uh, he uh, talked about that um, uh, all religions uh, should be respected. These are all very reassuring statements uh, coming as it does from India's Prime Minister. And as you said that after the Gauraksha comments, it actually fits in well with the overall, uh, the message he's trying to send out that those who want to use uh, these social fault lines of this country uh, would not be tolerated by this government. So these are all very assuring. But I think more reassuring uh, than uh, these statements to me uh, was the manner in which he politically packaged uh, what we call economic reforms. And I think his political packaging of reforms, the manner in which he did, uh, was uh, quite uh, quite interesting, uh, and I think he made uh, uh, the the, the so-called economic reforms look uh, uh, and and and, and uh, look uh, quite people friendly, and and he, the way he was trying to explain economic reforms, it does appear to me he's trying to tell the people that economic reform success will depend on how it actually matters to the common man. So his focus was, uh, was Dalits, uh, his focus was women, his focus was farmers, and his focus was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was the common man. And in, in all these areas, his common theme was how to make delivery of governance speedier and execution of projects faster. So I think uh, the, the larger, and, and finally, he talked about connecting markets. And the way he wove in connecting, the idea of connecting markets by using GST as well as setting up agricultural mandis to do away with the, the arhatiyas. And I think uh, the manner he tried to sell uh, economic reforms mm. to, uh, uh, to the common man of this country, to the ordinary citizens, and how it is going to improve the lives and they're doing business. So instead of uh, talking to businessmen and the business sure. community, he was talking to Indian citizens and making them realize that what reform can do for them Sure. whether the perform, transform and reform, that mantra he gave out. And I think that that was quite uh, interesting the uh, way he packaged economic reforms. Sure, absolutely. Let me bring in Mr. Jagannathan as well into this. Uh, sir, uh, welcome to the show. Your thoughts on both the aspects, I mean, one, whether you think this message of rising above uh, our differences, uh, of course, also that, uh, that slight mention that the government is willing to give credit to previous governments wherever it is due. I'm guessing that remark was in context to the GST. Uh, some of that, trying to build this political consensus. Is this a new government that we're talking about? In which case, uh, do you expect a greater speed, a greater momentum to start picking up in the reform and the legislative process? 
uh, this speech marks roughly the midpoint of this government. So, uh, in the first half of the government, though of course there may be still a few months till you reach the exact midpoint, but in terms of Independence Day speeches, the first two speeches were about announcing plans and schemes and getting them off the ground. This speech marks a, a turnaround and basically it says that look, there will not be too many new schemes now. I am the guy, the ACE implementer, I am the guy who is going to deliver, I am going to make sure that there will not be just schemes but there will be implementation and there is implementation that you are going to start feeling. What he was actually trying to do in this speech was to say that look, I have announced all the schemes, everything is done, there won't be any new schemes. As Kiran Majumdar Shaw said that I mean he did not announce any new things, only one scheme on re uh, uh, reimbursing uh, poor people for hospitalization expenses. But the, it is about uh, connecting the dots between schemes and the last man, which uh, AKB also mentioned. I think this uh, uh, speech was about, uh, it actually marks the point where he starts facing 2019 and say now we are in uh, not just economic mode but political economic mode where I have to sell my ideas and dreams and all that into reality. I have to convert everything into some kind of long term thing where you, the last man, starts feeling that yes, it's reached me. He talked about LED bulbs, he talked about DBT, he talked about how uh, the last man is going to get uh, solar power, all kinds of things, the uh, soil health card, all his trademark phrases came in and he said, look, all these are not meant for uh, generally talking about schemes, but it's about reaching you. He talked about that village in youth, uh, Uttar Pradesh, which got electricity for the first time, who might be watching TV. So the, he's reminding the voter there that, look, when you watch me on TV, it means you have got progress now. Now you can now directly access what we are trying to do in Delhi. So he's connecting the dots between Delhi, the states and the last village in India mm. saying that everything is going to reach you. Some of you would have felt something of the change there. So he is less about economy and more about political economy. Let's also welcome in Mohandas Pai who joins us on the panel. Sir, uh, great to have you this morning. Your thoughts on the speech and on what the panelists are saying, the consensus on the panel so far is that this marks the midpoint of this government's tenure and therefore the tone is changing, the audience is changing and the focus increasingly is going to be on getting the Aam Aadmi on board. I think uh, what you're saying is right. I think uh, he changes uh, speeches, changes direction when uh, Rahul Gandhi made that remark about Sud Boot Ki Sarkar. I think that is a turning point. Till then, it's all about business because then it hit him hard that he could be attacked by people who could accuse him of being elitist and doing things for a small number of people, all the wrong things that the UPA did. Now you see him change tack to the great mass of India and how he's going to improve the lives going forward, the focus, the you know great benefits is going to give them power, water, sewage, housing, the bare necessities of life. I think he may is, is turned around because let's admit it, political power rise in the 75% of India which is outside the urban areas. It's not an educated middle class for a small part. Political power lies there. Economic power lies in the 300 million people who make up the educated middle class. So you have to play both sides of the game. And if you don't uh, give the people at the bottom of the pyramid what they want, you're not going to come back to power. He obviously wants to make sure he wants to come back to power in 2019. And I think he's going in the right direction. And one other thing which I want to point out about is attack on Pakistan. For the first time, a Prime Minister of India stood up and told the people of this country that a neighboring country is promoting terrorism. They applaud when our children are killed. And then in their own country, in Balochistan, POK and Gilgit, people are applauding the Indian Prime Minister because India is a sea of, a ocean of peace, a ocean of security for people which gives them the ability to go on the dream, whereas a neighbor is promoting terrorism, killing their own people. I think it's an extraordinary statement to make. Politically, mm. I think it marks a turning point in subcontinental politics because right now he wants to isolate Pakistan. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought up that point because I was going to do that anyway, Mr. Pai. Uh, and AKB, let me come back to you on this. The, the political uh, statements that have been made in the speech, the comment on Pakistan, very, very clear. And then he also went on to generally say that India has to engage with global institutions. And he, of course, uh, went on to say how India's stature and rankings are increasing on the global index. But specifically on the matter of Pakistan, because that's another thing that this Prime Minister has been singled out against. What was the takeaway that you thought was most important? Well, you know, uh, I think uh, he uh, uh, was slightly defensive on the Pakistan issue the way I saw it. And I think he uh, was in, a, in an explanation mode 
when he talked about Pakistan. He began that, uh, that, that section of his speech started off with how he invited the seven nations of the region on the day of his inauguration of his government. And then he explained uh, how uh, uh, the neighboring country is uh, actually promoting terrorism and how children being killed there are also uh, causing anguish uh, across the border. Uh, and whereas uh, some countries are, uh, are encouraging terrorism of that sort. Uh, I, and I think uh, he is acutely conscious of the fact that his recent attempts uh, to, to, uh, to offer uh, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 offer uh, um, uh, peace and, uh, uh, and, and negotiations have actually been not made much progress. And he was, uh, therefore, he, I think it remarks a kind of a change in his approach uh, to Pakistan and wherein he is uh, leveling this direct charge uh, which is uh, significant sure. uh, because uh, it is, comes after his, uh, his uh, I would say, a kind of rebuff he got from uh, Pakistan on his overtures, mm. uh, which, you know, he sort of uh, uh, made an impromptu uh, halt uh, at Lahore to meet Mr. Nawaz Sharif. And after that, uh, Pakistan, uh, there was an attack in Pathan Court. Sure. Uh, so I think the relationships have soured. Well, we have to take a very quick break on that note, but this conversation continues on the other side. Don't go away.